Coming up, we're going to be talking about the success of Madam Web. Blade has lost another director, and also The Rock signs a new overall deal with Disney. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hey, it's Roger here from what's on DisneyPlus.com. It's time for a quick Disney Plus news roundup. Let's talk about the success of Madam Web on Netflix. Um, so this film was released by Sony, but it's obviously based on a Marvel character from the Spider-Man comics. And it's kind of a weird thing. Marvel kind of promote it as part of this deal that they They've got. Um, now, good thing is, is if you're in the United States, in about 18 months' time, you're going to be able to watch Madam Web on Disney Plus because they have the pay to rights for this film. But for the next 18 months, it's on Netflix in the United States. Don't know where it's going to be arriving elsewhere. But it looks like it's been a huge success when it's dropped onto Netflix because a lot of people have decided to check it out. The Nielsen numbers have come out and it is the most watched film of the week, much higher than any other film. Um, not quite as good as Bridgerton, that one just absolutely dominated the streaming charts. But it's very interesting to see how well this film has done. But I also feel... This is where, like, when a movie drops onto streaming, you know, you're not paying for it, you've you maybe heard about it, and you're much more likely to go, oh, I'll give it a go, see how bad it is. If it's really bad, I'll turn it off. If it's really bad, I'll have a bit of a laugh of it, and that kind of thing. You know, these kind of things come on, where you can watch a, a bad movie at home for, you know, included in your subscription, is a lot easier to suck it up than when you got paid to see it in cinemas, etc. But it does show how, a movie can still have some legs and still be of value, even if it's not a box office hit. And yeah, so kind of same thing happened with Morbius when that one got released, so people kind of checking it out. I think also maybe like Rebel Moon, because that was kind of pretty bad as well. But I'm um, just looking here at some of the numbers from Nielsen, just to kind of look here at how it did compared to other movies. So obviously coming in at 1,162 million minutes, nearly double that of the next movie, which was Mother of the Bride, the next big Disney Plus movie that was on there was Moana, 231 million minutes. So you can see here a massive, massive difference in terms of viewership. And we're really seeing that now with the streaming charts on Nielsen of how, in some ways, how few people are watching stuff. The, the viewing numbers are massively down. Obviously, compared to the pandemic, you can't really do that where we're all locked in. But films and shows can get on here for much lower than they used to. Um, like I said, Bridgerton's doing really well. But also, I just wanted to bring up with the Nielsen chart of... It's also really highlighting how important Hulu is to this because there's a lot of attention on Netflix and there's a lot of attention on Netflix originals. But one thing you can quite see, clearly see is that in the acquired chart, eight out of 10 of those shows are available on Hulu. Some of them have had a boost from being on Netflix as well, so I will give them that. But Hulu is really kind of pulling in on those acquired shows, those big shows that people watch consistently. And also that then um, corresponds to what we're seeing on the Oval chart with shows like Bluey, but also Grey's Anatomy, Family Guy, those kind of series are also doing very well. So Hulu is definitely, I would say, into that kind of second, second place role. And obviously that then leads over into Disney Plus with Hulu on Disney Plus. But... Yeah, Netflix is running away, and they, they when they put something new out, like Bridgerton, it just gets viewed in massive numbers. Disney and Hulu just can't quite get, get anywhere near that. But they definitely seem to be now in like very much in that second place. Um, just again, we're just waiting for the, the full merger, which will then kind of combine these things. But yeah, so don't, don't while there's a lot of attention on the Netflix stuff on Nielsen charts, Hulu and Disney Plus are still kind of getting things in there, just not as well as other things. But let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I think he is now, let's now talk about The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. He and his company, um, Seven Bucks Productions, have signed a new overall multi-year deal with Disney to produce content for both theatrical and streaming. So this is going to be across all of the different platforms. Now, Seven Bucks Productions have been behind most of the films starring The Rock. It's kind of one of the things he does. Jungle Cruise, Black Adam. He's also created some shows, including the Disney Plus original series Behind the Magic. He also made Stuntman. Um, also, like Young Rock. Um, a number of wrestling documentaries as well. So they're going to be kind of getting you know, like a first look deal. So anything that comes up, they'll be looking to make it. Um, I think it's a good move. I mean, generally, I like stuff with the rock in, but I think also like moving into other bits and pieces. You know, maybe it fits some of it might fit with ESPN with like the resting stuff that he tends to be more interested in doing, which I like as well. And yeah, I mean, I think this is just a good good news. And I think you know, just getting sort of the rock as a major face for Disney. I think that, I think he just fits 
that's there doing more of the comedy kind of stuff I think that will work quite nicely but let us know do you think this is a good move for Disney to kind of get into a overall deal with seven bucks productions love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below shifting gears now let's now talk about Blade which is just a movie that Marvel just can't seem to get going um, this was originally announced back in 2019 Maharsha Ali was announced as being starring as Blade at the Vampire Hunter and since then it's just been delay and writer leave and the writer come in and a new director come in and a new director go it's just can't keep you know they, they put it down to the strikes they put it down to the pandemic but overall just things just don't seem to be working very well originally back in 2021 basim Tariq was hired to be the director for the film but he was then replaced in 2022 by yang ran but however that is now changed and now he has left the project uh, apparently this happened a few weeks ago um, it was amicable. Now there's lots of like rumors going around of like, well, who might replace them? What they're going to do? I'm still set to be filming maybe later this year. Now, personally, I think this entire project should just get put on the shelf and they go, yeah, we're not going to do this. We're going to come back later. And um, there's been lots of talk as well of, you know, the script has been all over the place with them wanting to focus on Blade's daughter and. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is all just kind of there's a lot of negativity around this film right now because there's just so many delays and just kind of hearsay rumors about what they were trying to do with it and how they're pulling it back and trying to change things around a little bit. I mean, there's kind of this weird thing of like it's a vampire hunter and you kill vampires. There's not a lot to it. But they tried, you know, maybe trying to do a little bit more with it than they could do, tying it in with other characters and stuff. But whatever reason, it just, just doesn't seem to be working. I also think Mashallah Hali um, is probably too old for the role right now. And I do think this is probably something that they're going to need to look into. Because if you're trying to start a franchise with a guy that's now in his 50s, by the time this movie comes out, he's going to be in his mid-50s. If you're looking for a sequel, he's in his 60s. This is just not right for a superhero um, whether or not they want to try and get him into Secret Wars or something like that, I don't know. It just feels to me like, just dump it. And especially with Marvel trying to focus just on maybe two theatrical releases a year. Do we need this film? Is this needed? Do you know, can they do something else with it and put it in there? You know, we've got um, Captain America and also Thunderbolts already taking place next year. Fantastic Four is supposed to come out next year. I don't know. I just, I just, I just think this film just is doomed and also really highlights... Why Marvel really sort of made a mess of announcing this stuff way too early. It was the same thing, you know, they announced an X-Men film and Fantastic Four and all the rest of it. These things are just so far out, they should have never, never have announced it that far in advance. Um, and we're still suffering the consequences. And it still impacts on, you know, like, upcoming events of, like, like I can say, we've got D23 coming up um, in August. They're going to be announcing stuff, which most of which... They've already announced, um, I was thinking the other day of like, you know, like the Marvel side of things for what they can show maybe at D23. Most of this stuff was initially announced and kind of the cast and stuff came out at the last D23 in 2022. And then most of it is going to be the same thing. And yeah, there might be some more footage now because they filmed it. But yeah, all the delays and stuff have really impacted it. And I just, Blade just doesn't seem to be hitting it. But let us know what you think of this. Do you think they should get rid of the Blade movie or not? What do you think of it? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Let's now talk about briefly what's new on Disney Plus today. The big new release is a new episode of Criminal Minds Evolution on Disney Plus around the world. Here in the UK, got all three episodes. For some reason, they held it back a week and now we've caught up. So... Next week, we'll, everyone the UK will be in line with Canada and Australia. Obviously, in the US, it's on Paramount Plus, but that's kind of the big new release really for today. Um, yeah, with Inside Out two in cinemas, they didn't really want to load up this weekend. They want you to go cinemas and watch that film instead. Are you going to watch it? Let me know. In our question of the day, which comes from Aaron, who says, "Will there ever be a sequel to Finding Dory from Pixar and Disney?" Now, apparently, there was talks of them maybe looking to do a sequel. Obviously, the last movie did really well, over a billion. Um, whether or not that franchise has kind of run out of steam of what else could they do the finding Marlin you know maybe they do that um, yeah I could see them doing something and keeping that franchise a go they want to continue making franchises and keep things moving along and keep making stuff um, they have had a lot of success with those characters so I think they could do but they got to try and balance that kind of line between sort of sequels and originals obviously we've got toy story coming up next uh, along with some uh, new originals like elio and yeah they're gonna have to find that balance so i don't know uh, uh, 
I would personally maybe think an Incredibles one would probably be a bit more suited right now, but let us know. Would you like to see a Finding Nemo sequel? Love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Remember to go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Remember to check out on Sunday for our live Q&A. And on that note, guys, thank you very much. See you guys soon. Laters.